Hey, this is a th another in this series of videos that are basically just taking a technical drawing and trying to replicate it in Fusion 360. Uh, you can go back to the first videos to get more context, but the idea is that getting good at sketching is kind of the, you know, 2D sketching is the way to get good at 3D modeling in Fusion 360. And the idea that you would be working from sketches on paper or a model that you can measure uh, and translating that to a design kind of mirrors this process that we're doing here of taking a technical drawing and making it happen in Fusion. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is, as always, I'm going to make a new component that's just kind of a best practice. I will call it tool holder for this one. And I will create a sketch on the front plane. So I'm looking at the front of this design and I'm trying to essentially imagine that it's a silhouette and I'm going to draw that silhouette. Uh, looking at the dimensions, it looks like they're probably inches. And so I'm going to change my units to inches. You know, it'd be nice if the drawing showed that, but it doesn't. But looking at those numbers, it looks like it's probably inches. So I'll hit line here and I'll create a line. Again, that first dimension, I want to kind of ballpark and get it sort of close. So that's 3.78. That's the bottom line. So I just kind of got it close and then I can start drawing from there. So I know that there, there's a vertical line here and then one that sort of kind of creeps out like that. And then another one here. Uh, one interesting thing is, you know, it's trying to make some constraints. So if I, uh, I, this is why I like to make it like really wrong, like this would be really wrong, but this is pretty close to right. So you can see what it's trying to do here. It's making a constraint between this, this line that I'm about to draw and the one on the right. It's saying that those should be perpendicular to each other. Now that can cause a problem for me later. Let me, let me leave it. I'm going to let it make that constraint for me and I'll see where it causes a problem later. So this line goes out here and then comes down here. So first I know that this one last one was supposed to be vertical. So I'll do that. And um, let's try and add some dimensions here. So this one we know is supposed to be 3.78. And the overall height from here to here, it looks like is two. Okay, that screwed things up a little bit, but let's just try and rough it out again. Okay, there we go. Um, the dimension here for this angle is 30 degrees. And the distance from here to here, it says, is 0.74. Um, okay. This is supposed to be 45 degrees. Okay. It's telling me I've got a problem. It's not allowing me to make that 45 degrees. And that's a little weird because, um, well, let's add some more dimensions. So we know that this is 1.12. And the distance from here to here is supposed to be 0.74. So actually, it's showing it as fully constrained right now. But that doesn't look right. And I know that this is not 45 degrees. If, if I look at that angle down there, it says, well, it says 120, but uh, that's not 40 to 45 degrees. So, uh, you know, the complement of that is not 45 degrees. So, I, you know, the problem here is that constraint that it made. If you hover over this constraint, it's saying that these two are perpendicular to each other, but that's not part of the design that I'm working from. So I'm going to click that glyph and I'm going to hit delete. And uh, now you can see there's some, some, something missing, right? And that thing that's missing is our 45 degree dimension. So let me add that back 45. And now, now we've got the real thing. So, you know, I, sometimes when I make these initial drawings, I make them really wacky so that the constraints all are added by me and it's not helping me. Sometimes it's helpful to have constraints added. For example, these are perpendicular and, you know, things are vertical and horizontal, but uh, other times it adds some unexpected ones. So I'll hit finish sketch and uh, that's the front, you know, just the silhouette of this thing. Now, it's always useful to kind of rename things. So I'll just click on this and hover and then I'll call this front. Now what I want to do is I think I'm just going to extrude this. I'll click on it and hit E for extrude and I'll extrude it. Well, because I'm going that direction, it's negative 2.24. That's the depth of this whole thing. So still doesn't really look like it. It's missing kind of a big slice right out of the front. And that's what we're going to do next. So I can create a sketch. Now it's useful to uh, create a sketch on one of these initial work planes, like the origin work planes. That's what those are. That's the origin of the component. 
Um, and, you know, that's better than putting it on the face here, just in case this face gets lost later, you might end up with things broken in the timeline. So uh, I'm going to choose this plane. And what can I do here? I, you know, I could, uh, because as I start sketching, let me make a line here. This is going to be that swooping cut that goes from here out here. Now, I'm not able to kind of inference from here. I can't land on that. And uh, that's a little annoying because I'd like to, like it to connect there. If I made it too big, it wouldn't be a big deal, but um, I want it to land there. So let me hit escape. And what I can do is go to create and choose project. And what it'll do is I can include parts of this other, this body in my sketch. So I could say include the whole body. And what that does is just brings in the silhouette of that body and uh all well more than the silhouette this is actually the all of the lines that um the sketch curves that were well these are the edges from the from the body right so now what i can do is create that line and i know that it's going to land on this edge and over here it's going to land on this edge so let's just put the dimensions now this is 45 degrees that's that cut 45 degrees and let's see what else do we have I think uh, well the distance from here to here is supposed to be 0.5 okay that's it it's constrained it's fully constrained it looks right so I'm going to stop although I do have one other thing that needs to get added here which is the um, the hole here now it's interesting because it shows that it's 0.625 in diameter it shows that it's 1.25 deep that sounds like it'll be better to actually use the drill feature so instead of making a circle there i'm going to make a point and that'll help me uh, land my drill in the right place later so i'm going to click here to add a point i'll hit d for dimension and i will just add a dimension here of 0.76 and one from here to here of 0.62. Let's move this down. Okay, um, that's where my hole is going to go. Um, I think that's mostly it. Now, uh, you know, I, I think it's possible to do this with less than three uh, sketches, but in this case, you know, just to keep things simple, what I'm doing is uh, I made that front silhouette. I'm making a silhouette from the side, and then I'm going to have to make one more from the top that covers those two kind of cutout teeth slots in there. So let me just finish this sketch, and I will call this one side. And I'm just going to let me go back to the home view so I can see what I'm doing. But I'm going to click this profile that was made and I'm going to extrude it this way. And that will cut off the top of this. Now, um, I could just drag it until it's far enough over. But if the dimensions of this body ever changed and it went too far, I might end up with a weird cut. So it's better instead of using distance, I'm going to say all. And that makes sure it cuts all the way through, even if this object, this body gets resized later. So I'll hit OK. And if we look at it, uh, and turn off some of these sketches. It's starting to look right. Now, the only problem here is those those two cutouts there. So I'll do the same thing. I'll create one more sketch on the bottom plane, and I'll just draw those uh, cutouts. And again, I'm going to uh, do project so that I can include the parts of the body that I'm interested in and hit OK. So now I've got all those uh, points and those sketch curves to help me along. Those are purple because they were projected in. So I'm going to add some cutouts here. Bad cutouts. Okay, and I'm going to add some constraints. So obviously this should be vertical, so should that, and uh, that's already vertical. Um, let's add the dimensions. This one here should go in. 0.54 and the width of it should be width of it should be 1.14 uh, the distance from here to here note that there's no distance between these two and we don't want to do any math in our head we just go by the drawing so this is one and the distance from here to here is 0.76 uh, something's not right. So as I move this around, I can see, oh, wait, there's a problem here. So there is a dimension here between here and here, and that's supposed to be one. Uh, 
Okay, that's it. I'll hit finish sketch. And again, I'll go back and rename this sketch just so I can understand later what I did. This is the top view and well, it's, I guess bottom, whatever. I'll hit extrude and choose those two planes. Now, uh, those profiles. So you can see it's hard to get to those. I could flip the model over and do that. But uh, another easy thing to do is hold down the button and then you can choose things that are underneath. So there's one, I'll hold down shift and do the same thing here. So I've got them both. And again, I want to make sure it goes all the way through. So I'll just get it started so it doesn't go the wrong direction and then just use all and that's that. Okay, there's my design. It looks just like the one in the um, original drawing. And uh, what I can do now is add that hole here. So let me turn off everything except the side sketch so that I can go back and um, cut that out. Uh, let me, this is a good point to tell you one other thing. In my preferences, if, if you go to your preferences, I'd recommend that you turn this on. If you go under design, uh, auto hide sketch on feature creation. So I have that unchecked. And what that means is if I do something like an extrude, it won't automatically hide the sketch because often I do more than one thing with a sketch. So uh, it's up to you, but you'll see if, if, yours, if your sketch disappears, uh, it's hidden automatically. That's because this is turned on. I have mine turned off. Okay, so um, I'm going to, now this is an interesting one. So I've got the, the sketch is over here. That's the hole that I want to make, but I want to make it over here. So that's a little odd, right? So let's see if the drill tool can compensate for that. Let's see, go to uh, create hole. Uh, it already picked up, that's the point, but um, let's see if we can, hmm. Well, this doesn't allow us to do the same thing that, um, well, that's a little annoying. I would like to do it on this face, but let's see. Let, let's try that again. Create a hole. So, oh, okay. And I think maybe if I choose this point, nope, doesn't like that. Maybe there, no. Okay, well. Yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, so uh, it would be nice if that sketch were on this side because that's actually one where I want to make the hole. Now, there are a couple of things you could do. It's a little, I mean, I could I could make this, I could redefine this sketch so that it's on this side. Let's see if that works. Uh, if I right click on it, redefine sketch plane and say, actually, I meant for it to be over here and hit OK. Uh, that looks the same. Looks like it worked. Nothing. There's no problem. It obviously like the extrude where it sliced through, it figured out that I wanted to still cut all the way through. I think that's probably because I chose all instead of a, a dimension when I did that extrude. So that works. Now I can do my hole. Another thing to do would have been to actually make this a circle in the, in the sketch profile. And I'll show you that in a second, just as a backup. But uh, here I'll click that point, click hole. And now I can add in all of the information about the um the hole so uh let's see i don't want a uh i guess i you know it doesn't say here but i don't want to point at the end of the hole i actually just want it to be uh flat so drill point flat and then the depth should be 1.25 and the diameter should be 0.625 so there we go. This is the whole thing. I can hide that and it looks just like the uh, drawing. Now let me go back a little bit in the timeline. I will remove that drill feature and um, let's go back to where I redefined this. So let's go back and re-redefine that sketch plane. So this is the plane. This is back where we were before, right? So it was back here and that dot was uh, inconvenient for the drill. Let me just show you what would have happened if I, uh, back here in time where I made the side, when I click that, you can see it shows it, shows it in the browser. So I know it's the right one. I could right click and just edit that sketch. And maybe instead of creating a point there, I could have made the circle. And I know that it's 0.6, to five in diameter. And, uh, you know, that first time that I did an extrude here, back in time here, when I do this extrude, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, when I did that extrude, 
to cut over here, I didn't include this, right? And I don't want to because that would make it go all the way through. But let's say right here, right after I made that swooping cut across using this uh, profile, what I might want to do is also make that drill hole and by just using an extrude instead of the drill feature. So let me do that. I'll go to extrude and I'll say this is actually the profile hold down on there and I could get that circle profile. But obviously it's on the wrong side. So what's nice about extrude is that you can say instead of starting where the profile is, start from somewhere else. So uh, I can either move it a certain amount or I can say start from whatever I click. So start from here and go that way. So what would the distance be? In this case, it'll be negative 1.25. And when I hit OK, there we go. I use the same sketch to uh, cut from two different places. I cut from here this way, and then I cut from here that way. So um, it's really useful to think about how one sketch can do the job of many. I could have, uh, if I you know, wasn't sure of myself, I could have gone back and, uh, let's see, where are we? Okay, I could have gone back and made a fourth sketch just over here for that circle and then gone that way or put a make a sketch right here and put the point there for the drill but you can see that one sketch was all we needed it's just that we're using it in two different ways from two different places super important not a lot of people know that that's possible and it makes a big difference in keeping everything clean okay